they would say, well, you may not have heard of Robert Bala as an artist before, but I can guarantee you, you've got a work of his art in your pocket. I didn't have the nerve to tell him that he was in a long line of people who'd made the same joke <laughs> over and over again. My name is Robert Bala. I'm an artist, a painter, and a designer. As a designer, I consider myself most fortunate to have designed the C-series of banknotes, the last Irish banknotes before the introduction of the euro. In 1989, a committee was formed uh, to consider a new series of banknotes and their theme was the movement uh, of Ireland into the modern age and they were to select um, a series of individuals who would uh, appropriately represent that, that theme. And they, they selected Catherine Macaulay, Daniel O'Connell, James Joyce, uh, Douglas Hyde and Charles Stuart Parnell. In 1991, it was decided to hold a competition for uh, a new 20, uh, 20 pound note, uh, which would feature Daniel O'Connell. And uh, artists uh, were invited to submit designs uh, for this new banknote. The uh, governor of the central bank at the time, uh, Morris Doyle, uh, remarked, and I think quite accurately, that anyone who could get their hands on one of these photocopiers could produce a, a copy of a, a banknote that would pass quite easily in a crowded bar any night and that th there was a very definite necessity to introduce new banknotes with increased security measures incorporated in them. I was astonished myself to receive a letter inviting me to uh, partake in this competition uh, because uh, well, certainly I'd never designed a banknote before. In fact, very, no, there was very few people in Ireland alive who'd ever been involved in banknote design. I was kind of delighted, honoured and a bit uh, nervous about this commission. And much to my surprise, uh, I had a letter from the bank saying I had won the competition, which I certainly didn't expect. This is a 20 pound note. It obviously ha features the, the portrait uh, of Daniel O'Connell, which uh, is based on uh, a print in the National Gallery by uh, John Gubbins. I think it's quite an interesting uh, kind of quirky look to O'Connell. In all the official portraits, he looks a bit serious. The back of the note features the four courts. An obvious reference to the fact that Daniel O'Connell was a, a very well respected lawyer. And also, uh, because he was involved in the repeal movement, uh, I have a copy of a document that O'Connell uh, signed, uh, which is uh, seeking the repeal of the Act of Union 1801, which got rid of our parliament in Ireland and joined us into the United Kingdom. The Central Bank, when they first met me, uh, said they knew about my predilection for slipping little things into pictures and various things, <laughs> subversive notions, and they said, we'll have none of that, please. What, what I did in this note, and nobody spotted it, uh, is, is the wording in, in the document. From seeking the repeal of the legislative union with England by all peaceable moral and constitutional means until a parliament be restored to Ireland, but so as not to offend our neighbours across the Irish Sea, I put the, uh, the dome of the four courts over with England here. So no English people would find uh, the note objectionable. <laughs> there was a very definite necessity to introduce new banknotes with increased security measures incorporated in them. I got a briefing document from the central bank which kind of resembled a telephone book. There was so much information in it. Included in the, in the briefing document was a photocopy of a talk given by the, the 
governor or director of the Bundesbank in Germany, stating quite clearly that a banknote is a security document and not a work of art. So that was a chilling reminder of the job I had in, in front of me. Oh, James Joyce, 1993. I was delighted that they had selected Joyce as um, one of the subjects for the notes. The first bit of trouble I ran into was the desire of the, um, the bank to have James Joyce smiling on the note and also that he be um, bright-eyed. I've never seen him smiling in any photograph. These are some of the um, images I was looking at and, and you will see how there's no smiles here and yet there is a wry smile there which has been introduced and also the eyes, very visible eyes in it which has resulted in, well, a different kind of James Joyce. I was aware of, I mean, he had chronic bad eyesight, so it seemed inappropriate to me to have such, uh, you know, wide eyes. Stephen Joyce remarked, Joyce's grandson, that uh, I had my uh, view of his grandfather. He had a different one. In the backgrounds, there's a 19th century topographical view of Dublin Bay, looking all the way down to Wicklow. It, it's based on a, an engraving done in the 19th century, so impossible to achieve. I mean, nowadays you could achieve it with Google Earth or something. The imagination of the artist then to be able to kind of look down on all of this, I thought it was interesting. The back of the note features Anna Livia, one of the, the gods of Irish rivers, which were sculpted by Edward Smith on the Custom House in, in, in Dublin. And there's a map in the background of the centre of Dublin with the Liffey flowing through it. That's actually a, a, a plate of the, um, the engraving. Oh, there we are. It's, a, it's a, an engraving of the head with Finnegan's Wake. I decided to use um, the opening lines of uh, uh, Finnegan's Wake. River run past even Adams, from swerve of shore to bend of bay, brings us by a commodious vicus of recirculation back to Hoth Castle and environs. In the Mint uh, in Sandyford, the fact that they print banknotes there, the security was amazing. The, there was a double perimeter and both uh, the guards and the army guarded the place. And, and getting in was a bit like, you know, getting into a foreign country through uh, security, etc. But they don't have facilities for making plates. So it was necessary to find a company, you know, somewhere who would uh, have this facility. The one we decided to go with was Gieshige and Devriant in Munich. The portraits on the notes that they had uh, printed, we thought were excellent. And that was what actually prompted uh, the central bank to go to Gieshige and Devriant to create the plates. It's one of the, the, the plates for, uh, for the 10 pound note with the portrait of Joyce on it. So there was a lot of translating going on, etc. And I asked uh, at one stage in the meeting, uh, who was the person who did these portraits? And, and, they, and they said, oh, it was a, a, a man called Antonio Lopez, an engraver who worked in the, in the, in the place in, in, in Munich. So I asked to see him. And uh, I just looked at Lopez and said, habla usted uh, uh, español? <laughs> and he said, si. <laughs> And it, ended, it, it, it resulted in an, a wonderful relationship I had with him as a collaborator in this project. The way we worked together when we finally got going was, first of all, I had to get my image approved by the, 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 the bank and our central bank. So I would do a small little oil painting of the portrait, which would go and be discussed, obviously, by the board or whatever. And it would come back, yeah, that's fine. And then I would do a drawing of the little painting and I would send that to Lopez and then he would do a drawing of my drawing and that would come back to me for my approval. He was a very good artist so I always approved and then he would start engraving the copper plate. In a month or two he would, it's, he would take a pull, a proof of what he had done and send it to me and I would look at it and mostly it was absolutely fine, but if a correction was necessary, 
I would, I would do a little correction and send it back to him and then he would make that correction or whatever it might be. It took him roughly six months to do an engraving for one note. The banknote with uh, Catherine Macaulay uh, came out in 1994. One of the things that was consistent in all the C-series was the watermark uh, as a security feature, and I decided uh, it would be interesting from a historical point of view to use the image of Lady Lavery uh, as painted by her husband, Sir John Lavery, as Kathleen e. Houlihan, to use that as the watermark. So there is a historical connection between the C-series the B series and the A series. Catherine Macaulay was a very interesting subject because uh, a lot of people were critical. One, why would you put a nun on a note? Secondly, would this be offensive to uh, our friends and colleagues belonging to different religions? I felt that was all wrong because when I researched Catherine Macaulay, I found her a really interesting woman. She came from a fairly uh, privileged background, but felt very strongly about the conditions that the poor were experiencing in Ireland at the time, particularly girls, young girls, in the context of health care and education. So she set up a, a, a charitable approach to these areas. Unfortunately, it seems that uh, she ran into some opposition from the, the uh, Catholic Archbishop of Dublin, who saw her activities as a challenge to his authority. Unless uh, she formed an order of nuns uh, that he would close down her operations or whatever. As a consequence of that, she formed the, the Sisters of Mercy, and uh, with the sole objective of providing health care for young uh, working class girls and education for them as well. And I felt that was uh, pretty radical for the time. When she died, the order discovered they didn't have an image of her. They commissioned an artist to paint a, a nun that they selected in the order that looked most like Catherine Macaulay. The portrait I've, I have of Catherine Macaulay is technically not of her, but of a nun who looked like her. This is uh a photograph of my drawing of, of Catherine Macaulay, which the, uh, the nuns were delighted with. On the front of the note, she's there. Behind her is the, the Matter Hospital, which of course was the hospital that she founded. The engraving has to be done on exactly the same size as will be printed on the banknote. This kind of high quality engraving, at the time, I believe there was only about six people in the world who could do this. It's literally hand cutting the copper to create this portrait. And it's a really precise, time consuming activity. You cannot make a mistake. If the tool slips, maybe three months work is just thrown in the bin. Leaving aside my talents as an, an artist and a designer. I think anyone who looks at the C-series will recognise wonderful work in the, the portraits, which is courtesy of Antonio Lopez. On the back of the note, there's uh, a school scene. Lots of people uh, th thought that this, that this was my daughter, and, and she gloried on this in school, that she was on the bank note, and she wasn't. <laughs> It was the bank's idea to uh, use the Misha Raftery on Filla poem on the blackboard. Misha Raftery on Filla, Lan Dochus is Gra, Le Sula Gon Solis, Le Cunis Gon 1995. 1995, okay. The new 50-punt note featuring Douglas Hyde. Previous to this, um, uh, my friend Antonio Lopez was not madly happy about doing Catherine Macaulay. She didn't have a beard or 
any sort of luxuriously detailed item. He felt that uh, it didn't give him much opportunities to exploit his skills as an engraver. So when Douglas Hyde came up, I said, you're going to like this one because he has a big bushy moustache, bushy eyebrows and uh, lots of detail that you can really enjoy working on. The front of it uh, has uh, the Aris Anuktaron, the home of the president when we declared a republic. And Douglas Hyde was, of course, the first president of the Republic. In the background, it's a wonderful piece of uh, art, and that is the base of the Arda chalice. You can only see this design, which is very small, when you uh, turn over the, the, the chalice, because it's within the foot of the chalice. In theory, only the priest saying Mass can see it, or God himself. And, uh, but it's on our 50 pound note, you know. Uh, the back features the emblem of Conor na Gaelga, which was founded by uh, Douglas Hyde. And there's a drawing I did of the, the Conra na Gaelga symbol. Also, uh, a manuscript uh, from the Royal Irish Academy uh, in the background and an Illin Piper. There's my drawing uh, for the, the bank note there. I was so thrilled that I had been able to convince the central bank to feature in Illin Piper because I loved the Illin Pipes and uh, to have them featured on one of our banknotes was, was a, I think, great. Charles Stuart Parnell. The note came out in 1996. He just got through, I think, by the skin of his teeth because we were moving inexorably to the Euro. My colleagues in the Mint were determined to finish the series, so thankfully we completed the series with Charles Stuart Parnell. Our Parnell uh, is the correct pronunciation, but nobody says Parnell Street, you know. I, I think a really interesting historical figure and all the controversies that... Uh, that developed because of his relationship with uh, Catherine O'Shea. It kind of relates, in a way, to James Joyce. The trouble that Parnell got into features heavily in Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. So there's a kind of connection there. In the background is Avondale House, which was his home in Wicklow. On the, the other side, uh, I've taken elements from the wonderful uh, monument in, uh, at the top of O'Connell Street, the Parnell Monument. There are the photographs taken from the top of the building in the, at the top of O'Connell Street. I had to blag my way in and I had to uh, kind of, I remember being very nervous because there was a chance I could fall off the roof. Right up at the top, there's a kind of torch of freedom and they're all incorporated in, in the back with that uh, statement by Parnell, which I think is very significant, that no man has a right to fix the boundary to the march of a nation, etc., etc. And that's, I think, key to his philosophy. These are, are all uh, plates of, uh, of the Parnell, contained in the hundred uh, pounds there are ivy leaves, and uh, that was Parnell's symbol. And there's ivy on the front as well. So hopefully uh, a lot about Parnell is, is uh, connected and, and uh, put on the note, which uh, will be there for posterity. Well, thinking back on the decade when the notes were, were, were in circulation, they were received pretty well. I, I was amazed by that. But I always remember when the first one came out, which was the 20 pound note with Daniel O'Connell. I was naturally uh, chuffed. I was, I thought this was fantastic and I was really proud, not of just of the work I did, but the work the whole team did and the work that uh, Lopez did uh, in, uh, in Munich. I remember it was either the first day or the second day when it came out. I went with my wife to the cinema and we were queuing up and I noticed there were two young girls just ahead of us in the queue and one of them pulled out the note and they were looking at it and and I was so full of uh, false pride I suppose I was on the verge of saying oh by the way I, I did that <laughs> and one of them held it up and turned to the other one did you ever see Enton so shite <laughs> and uh, I uh, I kept my mouth shut I have to say uh, 
But that, but that was unusual. Generally speaking, the response was pretty good. There was no campaign against any note in particular. Generally speaking, they were well received. For a start, I feel myself most fortunate to have been asked to do this, to design the last. Well, when I started, we didn't realise it was going to be the last series of Irish notes because the euro was very distant on the horizon. Banknotes in particular are a really important signifier of national identity for a country. Like in the early days of this state, uh, the government, the Free State government, was determined to bring out notes because they didn't want uh, Irish citizens walking around with a picture of the English monarch in their pocket. They couldn't get Irish banknotes out fast enough. In fact, we were busy stamping English banknotes with Seerstadt and Heron on them, and, and even coins were being overstamped because we recognised that this was an important signifier of our identity and of our independence. So I think they're very important, and I'm proud to have been asked to design banknotes for my country. Disappointed that we still don't have them, <laughs> but that's life and that's history. I suppose as an artist, you're always kind of concerned about legacy, because often the rewards when you're alive are minimal. <laughs> uh, but when you do something, you like to think it will live on after you. And uh, I'm inclined to hope that th this series of notes will always be there somewhere and remembered. I clearly remember Percy Metcalfe's uh, coinage. I think everyone, uh, you know, who's old enough remembers all his uh, wonderful coins with the uh, Irish wildlife on them, domestic animals as well. They are superb and I would like to think that, you know, if Percy's up there I'll be trotting after him. Thank you.